everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And you know how some browns lead a little bit purple, some might read a little bit red, orange, or yellow? Well, this is a brown that I would call brown. This yarn is Knit Pick's Swish Bulky Yarn in the colorway Loam Heather. It is 100% superwash merino wool. And the yarn is a really deep brown with some red and almost gray undertones. A heathered yarn has multiple different colors that are sort of incorporated together. And so it gives the yarn a lot of dimension and beauty to it. Now this is an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, which means we're going to dye this yarn. We're not going to be able to transform it very much because it is already a very deep color. But I think that if we add some like pink and deep red, maybe we could make something that feels pinker or likely it'll hopefully feel a little bit more burgundy-ish leaning overall. <laughs> Part of me would want to try to dip dye or something over this, but I think the odds of being able to make a lot of conclusions there are very, very slim. So we're going to try some kettle dyeing today, and then, depending on those results, we'll decide where we want to go. But before we get started, I want to open this up. Uh, if you want to learn more about any of the tools or equipment or even the yarn that I'm using in my videos, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. And aha, this is what I'm looking for, the end. Because it's going to be hard to know if and how much we've transformed this yarn, I am going to take a snip of the yarn from the tie and we'll save this uh, for the end of the video. So now I have some snips of the yarn attached to the label so we can compare uh, the finished yarn to this colorway in the end, which is now looking very overexposed. Typically, I might try to pre-soak the yarn so that way we can get more even coverage, but I don't care about getting even coverage today. I just care about getting coverage. Well, let's take a peek at our dyes. Honestly, if we end up with tonal variation we can see, that'll mean that we know things worked. I have some old dye stocks here in Cabernet and Deep Magenta, and I'm planning on measuring the volume of dye that we have left here, even though that may not give us the best read on how much dye there actually is. These dye stocks are so old that some dye could have settled towards the bottom, and so it's possible that the dyes are a little more concentrated than when I originally mixed them. Dye stocks can be great, and you can store and use them for a long time, but I would say as a cautionary tale, it is likely best <laughs> uh, if you want to know that your concentration is really accurate, it's best to use them um, as close to when you mix them, in my opinion. But saving the dyes to use for other types of projects is also completely fine. It's just for reproducibility, you might want a fresh stock. Okay, in my dye math, we have 16 cups of water. And if we have more, I would say then, uh, well, we'll see how much dye we have total. Okay, I have about 69 milliliters of deep magenta, which is already a pigmented color in her own right. But Cabernet overpowers everything. And the downside of over dyeing a dark brown with Cabernet already is that while it's saturated, it is also a bit muted. Uh, just wanted to point that out. Okay, and we have, it's hard to say because there's some bubbles, a little over 50 milliliters of the Cabernet dye. Now, I do plan to rinse out um, both the graduated cylinder and both stock solution bottles and empty that extra rinse into the pot. I brought our dye bath over to the stove to start heating up. And we've definitely added more volume, let me think. Oh, I guess we probably have, we started with 16 cups of water, maybe we have around 20, uh, 20 to 24. So let's do six tablespoons of white vinegar. Two, three, four, five, 
6. And the vinegar is 5% acetic acid. I'm going slowly because I don't want to cause drips. <laughs> and I'm going to heat this up uh, before we add our dry yarn to it. Now, we're right on the cusp of the amount of pigment where I would think about adding another skein of yarn, but we'll see what happens and then decide if we need a yarn mop because we're also within a range where it would be reasonable for yarn to absorb color, but let's not forget that our yarn already has pigment in it. I highly, highly doubt that Loam Heather is all done out of like natural wool tones. The fiber has been dyed at some point. Uh, and so there's probably a limit to how much dye it can take. And we have at least one and a half. Oh no, not quite that much. But we have over a gram of dye, well over a gram of dye in here. Editing Rebecca will let me know approximately <laughs> how much dye we have. But anyway, I'm gonna wait for this to warm up and then we'll come back over. We're getting nice and warm. I'm curious how easily the yarn is gonna sink in. And the thing is, once this yarn is wet, it's hard to know if it's changing color because the wet color is so deep. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm not exactly trying to dip dye, I'm just trying to careful, carefully submerge our yarn. But see how I'm just like wet with a tiny bit of dye in there, it looks black, but I do see like a hint of some red and pink in there. But it's gonna be hard to say if it's transformed. <laughs> oh, until it's dry, okay. Now I guess all we have to do is wait to see what happens. Uh, the heat is on medium right now and I'll set a timer for 30 minutes. And at that point then we can decide what we need to do. I'm expecting there to be a fair amount of color left in here at that point. So we'll see. <laughs> Part of me thought about grabbing a second skein of yarn and dyeing um, like a bare skein with the skein side by side, but I didn't know if the bare skein would suck in more dye uh, with the same pot because it doesn't have any dye or pigment in there already. So anyway, I didn't know what would happen and we're trying this. But if you want to see me try to over dye yarn that is this dark <laughs> again and maybe go for something more variegated, uh, let me know down in the comments and please make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on. But anyway, I'll see you in about 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes. Ooh, that's promising. We can see to the bottom of the pot. Oh, that's very promising. Okay. Because from looking from here, because the yarn is so dark, it looked like the water was still super dark. Okay, this is a cup that in one video, I measured what two glugs of vinegar was. So I would say this is about one glug of white vinegar that I'm adding here. I'm not expecting 100% of the color to bind to the yarn, but I figured we'll, we'd increase the acid and we'll give this 30 more minutes. Um, I'm also increasing the heat a little bit and well, we'll see what happens and hopefully we don't have a big bleeder in the end. All right, I'm gonna turn off the heat and let's find our zip tie, okay. The amount of color in the dye bath is unchanged and I'm gonna leave that dye behind because sometimes with Cabernet, we have a little bit of extra and ooh, do I see variation? Maybe, maybe I see areas, yes, we're overexposed. Some areas look way more pink than others. Ooh, that is exciting. But I'm gonna leave the yarn aside to cool and We'll wash the pot to remove all that staining. But once the yarn is cool, then we can wash it. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm sitting here scrubbing my dye pot and realized I may as well just wash the yarn in here and we got a bleeder. Now, I was gonna say at the first dunk, this isn't a concern because 
The water was pink when we stopped. But that's a lot of bleeding. Oh dear. I mean, not as much color as we put in the yarn. And you know when, like, that, that dark violet hair color that some people dye? That it's like, it's so dark it's almost black, but it's pink? That's what this is looking like to me right now. I'm gonna add a little more dish soap. That was all that was in here. And I'm hoping that the bleeding won't be as bad this time around. It still looks pretty bad. But I don't think it's as dark as it was, but we'll see. Okay, we've still got some soap in here. We're gonna fill this up. Let's see. All right, you know what? It is getting better. There is some color in here, but it's not as much as we had before, and that is a good sign. So I'm gonna keep rinsing the yarn, and I'll check back in when it seems like things might be clear. I did accidentally leave the yarn to soak at one point for a little while. <laughs> and you can see we have significantly less pink than we did before. Um, so I am going to go ahead and put this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. But actually before I hang it up to dry, I'll come back and show you because maybe we'll see more of the reddish hue we have in here. We're still wet, but the yarn is definitely more pink, more burgundy than brown. But we definitely have tonal variation in here as well, which is awesome. I know it looks a little bit like some of it could be a trick of the light, but I really do see more brown and more sort of pinkish areas on here. I think this will be even more apparent once it's actually dry versus just damp. It is nearly impossible for me to show this color accurately on camera. Uh, it is like a burgundy, but a brown kind of burgundy. Oh gosh, which of my browns would that be like? Espresso bean is too purple. But maybe, maybe. I feel like I'm still a bit overexposed here, but I'm bringing over our original color and we absolutely have a difference. It's funny, the difference on camera is a little bit more extreme right now because uh, we're still a little overexposed, so this color is so dark. But while it's overexposed, you can still see that we have depth and dimension in here. They're still heathered because the different colored fibers in the yarn each took up color a little differently. But let me see if I can get a little more accurate representation. This might be a little closer to what I see in person, even though this is rarely a problem. It's looking a bit more red on camera than it is in person. If I put my hand in, then you can see my hand is a little overexposed, but I'm doing this just so you can get a sense of the depth of color. Zoomed out is a lot more accurate, and you can clearly see that original little sample. Uh, it has some contrast with our color white. There's no doubt that we have a deeper, moodier color. Oh, I don't know what I would call it, but it is so pretty. I do believe that we have some tonal variation in our yarn today. It's hard to show on camera and when twisted it's so dark that it really is just hard to see. But we did successfully transform a very dark brown yarn into something else. Now if I didn't want to also go deeper in the color, if I had stuck with just the magenta, the deep magenta, and used a bright color to try to shift the tone, then we would have um, maybe not been quite as dark. We would have been able to shift into a burgundy, but had a little less darkness in it. But we also did have basically a burgundy in there. And so that contributed to the depth and the darkness in our yarn. And so there's no way to over dye a brown like this and get a neon yellow but you can shift the color at least a little bit <laughs> with some over dyeing. And so that's just another way that you have in your arsenal to transform the yarn. 
And I feel like this is a good illustration of why I have not dyed my auburn hair yet. <laughs> because it is a dark reddish color, not super bright. And I know that if I were to dye it a lot of colors, it would just deepen it and maybe turn it a little bit brown. And I don't feel like bleaching my hair. Maybe someday, but not today. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. And let me know if you want to see me take a base that is this dark and do something more variegated on it. I would be happy to play around with that in the future, even though I know I would be cursing things while I'm doing it because you can't tell what's happening on the yarn when it's wet, when it's that dark. And so I'd really have to keep track of where I already had a dye and whatnot. But just let me know in the comments if you want to see it. Thank you so much for watching.